How did the dinosaurs get to be so gigantic? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University, teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. So how did the giants, the long-necked dinosaurs like Apatosaurus and Plodocus, get to be so big? These dinosaurs belong to a group of lizard-hipped dinosaurs called the Sauropoda which gained their large size in the middle and late Jurassic and survived until the end of the Cretaceous 66 million years ago. Now during the late Triassic and early Cretaceous, the Protosauropoda, the forerunners of these giants, were rather small. Some were even bipedal, walking around on their two hind legs, much like modern birds. Now these little dinosaurs like uh, Eoraptor and Ankyosaurus were not much bigger than a fox terrier and some like Platyosaurus reached for a donkey or horse size. There was natural selection working however um, on making these dinosaurs larger over time during the middle Jurassic. This selection came from the fact that during the late Triassic and the early Cretaceous carnivorous dinosaurs were getting larger and more formidable. While the bird-hipped ornithischian dinosaurs developed armor and horns, the sauropod dinosaurs simply increased their body size. The larger you are, the less likely a predator would take you on for fear of getting squashed. The faster you grew, the better you were at surviving into adulthood and reproducing. This natural selection by predators put a pressure on these dinosaurs to become gigantic from about 190 million years ago to about 170 million years ago. Now, a similar strategy is seen with living elephants. A fully grown elephant does not have to contend with a lion. And if the herd protects the young individuals into adulthood, there's a distinct advantage that they'll become larger. So how did these dinosaurs become the largest land animals to have ever walked the earth? Well, first, they started to walk on all four legs, and they gave up the grasping ability of using their, their hands for gripping and defense. These forearms and hands also became pillar-like to support the increasing weight of a larger body. Now the term we use in paleontology is that their limbs became gravipodial, which means that the, the bones became thicker and the foot became in, reinforced to support the increasing weight. Now dinosaurs also adapted a digitigrade stance, which means that the, the dinosaur supported more of its weight using its fingers, its digits rather than a plantigrade stance in which the weight is borne principally by the, the ankle or the wrist. Now this pillar-like support on the fingers gives the weight of the, of the body a strong beam-like support for an increasingly heavy creature. In the hind foot, these giant dinosaurs supported their weight with their digits, yet retained claws, uh, large claws on their first digit or their big toe. These claws were likely useful for scratching, um, as well as some gripping as they walked across irregular surfaces. Now these gigantic sauropod dinosaurs had a secret way of both increasing their body volume, yet maintaining a less dense and a lighter body weight. And it has to do with their long necks. Sauropod dinosaurs have cervical vertebrae that are very complex, with large open spaces between the bones and large processes that extend from the centrum. Even the centrum is hollowed out with spaces called a pleural seals. Now along the sides of the vertebra are spaces or pockets within the bone, and these are called pneumatic foramina. In life, these spaces would be filled with air sacs. But how do we know that these spaces were occupied by air sacs? That just seems weird. Well, it has to do because these cavities along the vertebra are occupied by air sacs in living birds. 
Now birds also need to lighten their skeletons. And they do this by expanding out an air sac system, which is basically invaginations from the respiratory system. This air sac system in birds is called a unidirectional respiration system. Now this respiration system is much more effective in providing a steady source of oxygen to the lungs. All right, you there, right there, you have to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And you got to do this for as long as you live. But birds and dinosaurs had the ability to breathe in continuously and to store that oxygenated lung air in these air sac systems within the body, thus providing a steady supply of oxygen to the lungs and to the rest of the body via the blood vessels. These gigantic dinosaurs, rather than lightening their bodies for flight like birds do, use the same respiration system to lighten their skeletons, particularly in the necks, to allow them to become extremely long. Increasing most of their body size through these air-filled cavities, thus I don't know, these dinosaurs are much like blimps and balloon floats that you see in a Macy's Day parade. Mostly air in these long necks, allowing these dinosaurs to get enormous. Now this scaffolding of bone is all that remains, a complexity of processes and apophyses that give the enormous necks of sauropods their characteristic natural engineering that amaze and confound paleontologists trying to reconstruct these gigantic creatures today. All right, now you should be able to assemble and explain the anatomical specializations of the sauropod body plan that allows them to reach gigantic body sizes.